Do you have white privilege? I believe everybody at Georgetown definitely does that is white. 100%. Absolutely. Absolutely. I think the fact that I don't need to think about my race, just going about my daily life is a sign of my white privilege. Um, if we're white, subliminally, we have privilege over other minorities. Yes. Being called a racist no longer makes me uncomfortable. It just doesn't because I've accepted the fact that um, I am racist. I was born and raised in the South. I'm a white woman um, and I have a lot of unlearning to do. My racism is not, it's not a character defect. It's not a moral failing. It's just the result of a lifetime of indoctrination um, in a very racist country. Now it's a character defect and a moral failing if I don't choose to do anything about it, but I am choosing to do something about it. Um, somebody asked me about white privilege and my direct messages. I want to answer it. Um, I hate talking Talking about race, though, just because it just, um, I, I just would rather leave that to someone else. However, based on this direct message, I do think that this is a person who is probably not going to listen to a black person and a black person is not going to have patience for this person. So I will do that. I'm going to talk about my lived experience. I'm not comparing being a woman to being black, indigenous, or a person of color. This is just, again, my lived experience. I graduated from college something like 20 something years ago and went into a field that is dominated by white men. If you live in the South, you know how it is, the good old boy network and the lunches and the golf course. This is that I'm a white woman. And so a lot of these men, I'm going to remind them of their wife or their daughter. So if they need some diversity on that white male team, they're probably going to hire me because I make them comfortable. Doesn't mean I'm not qualified for the job. Doesn't mean I didn't work hard. Just means I've got a little bit of an advantage. But these little advantages or disadvantages can change the entire trajectory of a person's life. My name is Lindsay. No one has ever thrown my resume in the trash because my name sounds too black or too ethnic. As a 45-year-old white woman, I can shop anywhere I want. Nobody's going to follow me around worrying that I'm going to steal something. I can walk around in any neighborhood and no one's going to call the police on me because I look suspicious. I've never seen someone in a parking lot or the grocery store like grab their purse and hold onto it real tight when they see me because they think I'm going to steal it. And as a white woman, I don't have to worry about my kids being pulled over for driving while being black. Um, I actually rode in an Uber last week with a guy who told me he has been pulled over 10 times, 10 times, one, zero times for no reason other than being black and driving an Escalade. This is white privilege. Doesn't mean I have a good life. Doesn't mean I have an easy life. Just means I have fewer obstacles. Just means that I'm able to exist without being terrorized by law enforcement. All right, guys. So we got to talk about this clip that is going viral of Miss Savannah Hernandez, who probably is one of the best journalists in the game right now. Okay. I mean, she really is. I have so much respect for her. Uh, she posted this video that is going viral of her calmly deprogramming a brainwashed, probably formerly woke, uh, white college student uh, who believes that he has white privilege. However, he can't explain exactly what privileges he has as a white man that everybody else in society doesn't have. And I think that she did a masterful job here of just using logic okay to help this individual understand that he again has been brainwashed to believe the things that he believes he doesn't actually really know why he has these beliefs so without further ado let's go ahead and roll this clip i i grew up as a white man and you, you're the exact opposite you know and so it's like my experiences are going to be different from yours how come i think uh you know there's a thing of like white privilege uh what privileges do you have that i don't have Oh, see, that's a question I keep asking myself because like, <laughs> yeah, so you don't know, right? You don't know, but you, you do know the concept of white privilege. You believe that you have white privilege. You believe that your life is inherently different than her life because of your skin color and your sex. But again, you, you can't, you, you still don't know exactly what privileges that you have that she doesn't have. In this day and age, like all the laws, I say all the laws, you know, I'm, it's hard to speak on something I'm not fully knowledgeable of, so like I'm sorry if I like make a mistake uh, in saying this, but it's like, like, uh, hmm. Don't you think it's a problem in society when white people think that they have more privileges than brown or black people? Yeah, and I think that's sort of the agenda that's pushed off because personally, it's like, not that I think I'm more pri privileged than anyone else because I had to work to get where I was. So, uh, again, so wh why break up white privilege, right? You said you believe that there's, there's this thing of white privilege, okay? And it, it assumes that, again, you have that white privilege. But now you're admitting that, you know, you actually really believe that you are not more privileged than everybody else in society because you know the work that you put in to get to where you're at. 
Amazing, right? Absolutely amazing. It's almost like he's saying that as a default. He's saying that because he has to say it. He's been told to say that, but that's not actually really what he believes from his own lived experience. And that's like the- So why do you have that mentality immediately where you, you know, kind of apologize to me? Like, let's talk about privilege. Let's talk about, I'm a white man in America, so we could have grown up differently. I got you. Why, why is that your first initial reaction to me as a brown woman? Wow, you're getting me good. See, these are the kind of conversations that I love having. Um, and I think it comes from a place of like, uh, I wouldn't say caution, but like in this day and age, people are so quick to judge and react and cancel. And so I guess it's that, that like caution to go into an interview like this. I'm like, I, I don't know where we're at, but now I know where we're at and I can like uh, go for real. Yeah, so you're virtue signaling, right? You're afraid of being canceled. So, so uh, again, he doesn't know what this person's political beliefs are, but he's assuming based off her race and her sex that she probably is some liberal, right? She's some liberal that thinks that because he's a white man, he has white privilege, right? So when having this discussion, the first thing that he says out the box is that, hey, you know, I acknowledge as a white man, I can have white privilege and our lived experiences are different. There are certain privileges that I have that she doesn't have, okay, in virtual skin color and sex, uh, but when asked to elaborate on those things, he, he can't elaborate on it. And we come to find out why he can't elaborate on it is because he actually really doesn't believe it, right? He, he had to do the woke virtue signal. He had to pretend like, okay, you know, this is what, you know, I believe or whatever to make sure that he wouldn't get counsel. And when he felt comfortable with her and knowing that, okay, um, she's not going to counsel me. She's not going to judge me. She's not going to, you know, call me racist or whatever. Then he said how he really feels, which is that, well, I don't necessarily, you know, know <laughs> if I have, you know, privileges over everybody else because, you know, I, kn I know that I've worked for what I got. Again, amazing how that works. Okay. But it, it goes to show you how afraid people are in this society to speak out against the woke agenda, right? It, it shows you that a lot of these people don't really believe the things that they claim they believe, they're just going along with it because they're afraid of being called racist. They're afraid of being canceled. They're afraid of the backlash. Again, there's no way in the world that most people in this country, for example, agree with teachers being able to talk to kids about sex or the far left LGBTQ uh, woke agenda. There's no way that most people in America agree with that. But again, you're going to be hard pressed in certain parts of the country to find people who are willing to speak out against and say, no, this is wrong because they don't want to be called homophobic. They don't want to be called transphobic. They don't want to be called bigots. And there's too many people like that in society, man. There's too many people that are afraid to say how they actually feel and to stand up uh, in the face of being called a racist or a bigot. And I think that's what you're saying here. You're seeing somebody say, well, I don't want to be called racist. I don't want anybody to assume I'm racist. So I'm automatically going to try to woke virtue signal, right? I'm going to try to automatically say, yes, I'm going to oppress her, blah, 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 blah. I'm going to say the talking points, you know, to make sure that, you know, I don't get canceled. It's sad and it's pathetic. It really is. Let me know what you guys think. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Most importantly, share a black conservative perspective. Peace.